I, so, I would say that we were the first ever people. This is a bold statement, but you can go and do your fucking research. What, virus syndicate? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But the first ever people in the world to rap on dubstep. Yeah, we were 100%. And that is a fact. And you can go and look back. That is a fact. To the reflex comp. We are the first people to ever rap on dubstep. What's going on people you are watching the rundown my name's nick i'm jay all right this is episode four and, we, and this episode is basically driven entirely by you guys yeah so we put a message out on social media and we said send us some questions what do you want to know like well, how can we enrich your lives <laughs> enrich your lives you know enrich. an emotional one <laughs> We're here to enrich our life. We're here to enrich, man. Oh, we're so kind. Enrichment, guys. Yeah, <laughs> enrichment <laughs> D over here. And enrichment J. Right. <laughs> right, questions. Right, so where should we go? Jay, do you want to... Right, we've got Twitter or Instagram. Choose. Instagram. Okay. Um, Standard. All right. We'll go Was to... Was that not a pop popularity contest? No, nah, like, where do you want to pick a question right, from? Yeah, no, nah, still Instagram, no. Fuck you now. <laughs> right. All right, so we're going to go to at Coburn Music, yeah? Big shout out to at Coburn Music. Yes, big up. Right, so his question is, how to pitch yourself to management? How to pitch yourself to management? Well, like, if, obviously, we're talking music, yeah? First things first, like, get some tunes together, innit? Like, if, if music's... If music's your thing, I think a lot of people jump the gun and think they need a manager early on in yeah. their career. Um, and that's not to say, obviously, I don't know where you are in your career. What's 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 it? Coburn. Coburn Music. Coburn Music. I, obviously, we don't know exactly where you're at, um, but I, I do feel like people often talk about management like, you know, I need management, I need this, I need other. Whereas, actually, there has to be something to manage. There has to be something to so manage. So the first thing would be... There has to be an income to manage would, would be my first point of call. It's like, first An of all, income, but but but... Irrespective of an income. Or a potential income. Yeah. There just has to be work to manage. So yeah. let's say like, you know, your tunes are getting played out. You're getting some gigs now. You've landed yourself a booking agent. Um, or are you ready to get a booking agent? Yeah, but let... Because a know, manager can help with that. Yeah, they can. But let's just say, for instance, basically, yeah, yeah. there's some infrastructure in Already what you're in place, doing. Yeah. There's, you know, there's things that are happening, what maybe the conversations are coming up um, around percentages and money splits and things like that, what you shouldn't necessarily be having with other artists. And basically, this thing is just to a point where it needs to be managed and it needs to be managed by someone other than yourself. Um, I think... That's the first thing to do. And, and the way to do that is to, like I was saying, you know, get- Is get explain that scenario. So like, I think like what, exactly what Jay's saying, you need to do the groundwork yourself. You got to come from this DIY to start with. So yeah, like build that fan base to an extent. Like yeah. you are getting some gigs, you have got label interest. The other and guys in your scene are playing your shit. You're yeah. getting call signs. Like basically your thing is coming to a point where it's getting some eyes on it. And not only that, there's becoming some kind of things to manage essentially. I think, I think the key word here is traction. I think without traction, um, e e selling yourself to or pitching yourself to a manager is a bit of a lost cause because a manager is a businessman. The whole point of a manager is someone who is in here to manage a career. Um, and he's only going to do that for money or a potential income. So I think you need to look carefully at where you are at within your career. And I think ultimately once, you know, something's popping, it's moving, you've got, you've got like gigs coming in, you've got releases going out. Then at that point, I think the managers will most likely come to you. So yeah, and I think also like what you need to do is you need to look around you and say, 
who is the person that supports me loads, who's always messaging me, who's always sharing my shit. Maybe there's someone who really, might be a friend of yours, might be a family member, someone who's just riding for you. You know, if you're looking for someone to help you find opportunities yeah. while you're making tunes, get one of your people who's, who's exactly. around you to do it in, in the meantime. Yeah. But I think if you've got all of them things in place, you've got some infrastructure, you, your thing's popping off, there's something to actually manage, then yeah. it's about packaging it in the right way to, to put to a potential manager. So going back to the initial kind of point of the question, at that point, it's about putting together a press kit, what's got, you know, easy, easy to digest information in it. Like, you know, song played by such and such at such and such a festival. Um, this DJ is saying this about him. You know, had over 25 booking, but I'm talking in a document, professional, mm -hmm. with links to your music, links to your socials, your stats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Package it up, make it look nice, put a bow on it. Do you know what I'm saying? That's that, and, and make it easy to to digest. That is the key. Don't yeah. be sending some fucking some book, some book, some novel. No one wants to Nobody read a novel. Nobody wants Charles Dickens. Nobody. Don't no. send them Charles <laughs> fucking Dickens. <He's> literally, <laughs> just like you know, make it make it easy for someone to digest and make it also look aesthetically pleasing exactly. make it look decent make it, you know you, spend spend some money to get someone to design it do you know what i'm saying like send it to a designer send them your, your press picks get if you have got press picks if you haven't you should be getting them done I you think know ultimately like you need to send out a piece of work that is representative of you and your brand and yeah. what you're trying to build yeah and you need to say all of that in one page document and yeah, in that one much. page document it needs to look and feel exactly like what you are trying to sell yeah, like, you know when you buy a can of coke you know exactly what it is by just looking at the tin Death. it's red and white and the logo is big <laughs> and round and you know exactly what it is and you know what it fucking tastes like yeah. and that's what your one page needs to look like the manager needs to look at that and goes right i know what that sounds like i know what that feels like i know where i can place that i know i can make some fucking money off that yeah and that's what you need to be thinking when you're pitching yourself to management hope that helps yeah man big Answer up your question. music yeah man big up right We'll move on to, all right, we'll take one from Twitter. Okay, yeah. um, <clears throat> you know what? Big shout out to the Twitter fam. Um, this is, this. I'm gonna answer this question because it makes sense to the last question. Okay. All right. So this is from at Wolverson Music, yeah? Big shout Wolverson. Um, so his question was, how do you get attention from labels and when writing demo submissions, how do you get a tip? Wait, how do you get attention from labels when writing demo submissions? And are demo submissions a waste of time? Right, so I've had this conversation with Rossi at Disciple before. Yeah. And um what he's cause I remember there was someone who hit me up who um I quite liked the music and I passed it on to Rossi. Um and Rossi didn't like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he wants, man. He didn't like it, man. He, didn't, he wasn't. He didn't like it. So he said, "Don't pass him on to me." But um, <laughs> you're nice, though, aren't you? I'm that. a nice guy, man. I'm a mug. Me. People message me all the time saying we listen to my stuff. I listen to everyone everybody. watching this now is gonna smash your DMs yo, with, with demos. Smash Nick's DMs with demos. Nah, for I don't us. mind, Joe. Send me your demos. I actually will listen yeah, to them. But listen, you don't build a, a label as great as Disciple by accepting everything. That's just the way it goes that's yeah. just the way it is and rossi really knows what great music sounds like do you know what i'm saying yeah definitely he knows his shit and you know what else right so back to like this getting attention from labels i think it's kind of a combination of what we just said before on about how to get a manager is in packaging it up making sure you've got something of value to put forward first but also i think We've get we're getting a label on board. I think first things first, they just use a bit of fucking common sense. Like don't send a label that releases fucking happy hardcore. <laughs> yeah. And dubstep record. Yeah, man. Come it, on. There's it's basics. Gonna, it's gonna be a no. Yeah. And don't send Make the right sound for the label, yeah. yeah and understand like, who you're sending it to. And yeah, exactly. When you're a lot, Sounds basic that, but a lot of people fuck it up. A lot of people that, fuck that it up. You know what? I seen um, you know, Mika. It's on the kick Bond Day. Yes. He did a post about this on Instagram. Big up, big up, uh, yes, Bond Day. Um, he did a post about this because he said people always ask him how to, how, how do you get signed to a label? And he put up one of his emails that he'd sent, you know, to a label. Yeah. And it said, 
and he's a bit arty farty, but he's a bit of an arty farty guy. But, <laughs> like, it's not what I would write personally, but the essence of what he wrote, he wrote was absolutely bang on. So he said, I wrote this track, I really felt it fitted the colour of your label. Be great to work together. Amazing, perfect. Now, perfect. I can hear it in his voice because I know yeah. him. I know him well. <laughs> so when I read that, I can hear I can hear exactly how it's said. So yeah, I do find it a bit arty farty. Because <laughs> he's an arty farty guy, um, but he's a legend. though, he's a good guy, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the essence of that is like know who you're sending it to, know what the sound is, um, and package it right. Don't yeah. send a book. Charles Dickens. No Charles Dickens. No. There's no None Charles Dickens in the music game, no. bro. You know what I I think though, like it's kind of it's not directly answering the question, but to me it's like yeah, labels. That's a good goal. And that's a good a good way to want to go. Um, but are you not trying to build relationships with artists as well? Like yeah. the artists are super passionate about this music. If they hear new exciting music, they love. They're gonna start playing it. You know. And I think, like, I've seen a lot of people break into various genres of music, dubstep, drum and bass, etc., etc., by... Relationships. Relationships. And mm. then labels pick them up. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, like, directly happens if everyone's... Everyone in the scene is rinsing your tune. You know what? I'm going to interrupt you here, Jay, because yeah? this... Because this... What you're saying now answers another question. Okay, who's so, that question from? From Malware, at Malware, in, yes, on, Malware. On, on Instagram. So carry on, Jay, but I'm just bringing Malware well, into the conversation. His so his conversation off. was, not his conversation, his question was, tips for artists trying to get into the scene and get collaborations with bigger artists. So this is kind of where where you're touching on, really. Yeah, but so I, think, I think, I think the, the bit in. what gets me there is to collaborate with other artists. Like, stop trying to beg it off or, or the other guys. Like, no disrespect to you or anyone watching this, yeah? But stand on your own twos, right? Make your shit sound so popping that mm. it's, it's the fire tune that everyone mm. wants to play. And I think people constantly, like, trying to... Right, if I can jump onto his thing up there because he's already got the numbers and he's built it, mm. yeah, then it's kind of like cocktail. I it? do, I do Listen, think though, there's an element of politics, of in course, there is, and that's I mean, not to man. say if organically you don't build a great relationship with another producer who goes, We should make a collab, it'd be sick, or or you suggest it, but cold calling, yeah, don't like <laughs> just DMing <laughs> random producers and saying, Let's collab, yeah. is not the way if that producer like we were saying earlier, has picked up on one of your tunes. He's been playing it. You're starting to build a bit of a relationship and he's going, yo, have you got any more? You send him another couple of tunes. He's like, these are fucking sick. And he starts playing them. You're going to play this at Lost Lands or you're going to play this at Creamfields or wherever the hell it might be. Yeah. Do you get me? I'm going to play this at Fabric, yeah? Then bam, you, you're building a relationship with said person and then the likelihood of a collaboration is, is, is there anyway. You get me? And it's like, then things naturally, naturally you're going to say, yo, it'd be wicked to collab on a tune or whatever, but build some rapport in it. Like, yeah. Build a relationship. Or don't like don't just make it seem like <clears throat> you're just trying to take. Do you or get like, me? Or like if it's someone who, who's a similar like level of artist to you, like then I think it makes more sense. And you've got to use common sense with these things. Yeah. Music, music business is not as fucking complicated as it sounds. And it is, it does sound complicated, like publishing and mastering and mechanical, mechanical, mechanicals, can't even say it. Mechanicals, <laughs> like all of these different areas of music business, they are pretty fucking complicated. But the basic reasons or the basic core directions to, to propel yourself and to get somewhere in the music business is is very much common fucking sense. Be but a they, nice person, build rapport, yeah. make great music, yeah. network, yeah. get out there. Package, Literally, package nail, on the, well. nail on the head. And this might sound like that can't be that easy. And but no it one, but it isn't, no one's saying it's easy, but <clears throat> they're the fundamentals of it. Without that, it's not Without happening. Without that, it's not happening. Then from there, you gotta make some good tunes. If your tunes are shit, then it's definitely not happening. So it, from there, it's just about building But you could skills. even make the most amazing tunes ever mm. and be a dick and no one's gonna wanna work with you yeah. because you're a dick. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think ultimately- It's very true, man. Be, the music game. When you get to the top of the music game, people are generally pretty fucking safe. Yeah. 
and they've not got there by being dicks. No. The whole like, I think people think of uh, the music industry is full of knobs. Yeah, it is. The mainly managers, they're knobs. <laughs> yeah. But like artists, I don't, I, there's a, pff, I've been doing this for fucking a long time, man. And you know what? There's a handful of artists, I'd say, are knobs. Literally yeah. a handful. But most of, of them are, most people out of the are hundreds. Cool. That we've spent time with, and that's collaborated just, that's with. probably me and him. <laughs> you know, probably, yeah. <laughs> we're at the worst yeah, end of this category. Yeah. <laughs> we're, at the wor- we're at the worst end of this category. No, we're not really. We're fucking well friendly. But and I, think nice. we a, I think we get a bad first impression. Yeah, because we're loud, man. We're loud and we're, we're a bit l- abrasive, so we give off a bad first impression, but we're actually really nice people. But we're actually lovely. <laughs> Believe it or come, not. Come and speak to We're fucking it. answering your questions for free. What more do you want? <laughs> for free. <laughs> for free. <laughs> <laughs> next time we're going to do a PayPal link. Nah, next time it's a Patreon. Trust me. I'm okay. Thinking, don't worry. It's coming. But for now you get it for free. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where should we go to? Should we Just go keep in- doing them. Instagram, yeah? Yo, you're muddling them up. I don't know how he's going to keep tabs on these questions here. Because? You know? I would read top to bloody bottom, right? No, he's like, are you, are you, do you know where you're at with that? Yeah. Oh, you're, it's professional. What can Look, I say? I've highlighted them in green. Oh, listen. Listen. <laughs> Fire away then, bro. What do you think this is, bro? Fuck you, Give man. us an Instagram one. Oh, uh, Instagram. Um, what was the reason we mixed rap with dubstep? Wow, that's a good question, I think. Um, um, it's a natural progression for us, it man. It was totally... Uh, we, we didn't... So basically, we're grime artists. That's where we've come from. That is our background. I'd go, I go a little bit before that to say that we were both very much into Jungle, yeah. which is now drum and bass, but it was a kind of a very different sound back then. And Jungle was MC-led. Same, but different. It was MC-led. Yeah. Now, MCing is not wasn't originally like rap in in a way it was more like toasting and hosting for the dj which was like what a lot of the reggae artists were doing in jamaica a lot of the bashment artists were doing and it was more about vibing with the you know early the early phases of hip-hop weren't so dissimilar with the hip hip yeah. hip, hip, hip hop you it was me? basically like yeah early, just vibing it early up. 2000s when it was like a mixture of it was like a mixture of rap with hosting yes. and that, that was kind of like what, what Jungle was and that. I guess the point of, of that is like, we were we never entered into it from a hip hop mindset. No. We entered into it from a dance music mindset. So when we first started writing lyrics, yeah. it was obviously we listened to hip hop and we've since evolved and put out hip hop projects. I think naturally as in the UK, there's, I mean, UK hip hop, as it were, was very much a different scene and culture. We're from, without trying to sound like too cliche with this, how do I say this without sounding like say a Say rags, man. We're, we're, we're street people. Like, we're from South Manchester and no UK hip hop scene was really popping when we were kids in, no. in South Manchester. It was jungle, was cool, and grime. Yeah, cool. and then grime. Garage and then grime. But it was, ne- it was never like a UK hip hop thing, so we would never be, you would never want to, like that would never be something you would seek out nah. to become a part of, because there was no culture for that where we're from. Do you know what I mean? I, so, I would say that we were the first ever people, this is a bold statement, but you can go and do your fucking research. What, virus syndicate? Correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. we're the first ever people in the world to rap on dubstep. Yeah, we were 100%. And that is you a can fact. go and look back that is a fact. to the Reflex comp. We are the first people to ever rap like, on dubstep in the world. It's documented, so really, and, and it wasn't- People say it was foreign beggars and we've had this conversation, big up Pavier, but let me tell you. Legends in the game, man, legends. My boys, but we were first. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> you enjoy it. <laughs> <that. laughs> Come but, on. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess like for us, it wasn't ne- necessarily um, a conscious decision. It was just like a natural progression. <clears throat> progression from being drum and bass MCs to being grime MCs. And then it kind of obviously, we our, our approach has always been quite lyrical. So if you listen to our early projects, all, all stories. grime and, and, and drum and bass MCing at that point was quite um, primitive in a way. It was literally toasting and hosting. And some of the grime stuff was more about the vibe and the energy and the repetition and, and the style, as well, whereas though, like, our shit was more like, more lyrical, like obviously it's We were telling now. stories, like we were writing stories yeah, about yeah, crackheads yeah. And, and girls getting forced onto the street into prostitution. Yeah. And, like, 
We were telling real stories. I wrote one track called The Money Would Be King. I don't think it ever came out. I didn't, but it was a masterpiece. It never up. came out of that. And it was like about a guy who got possessed by the devil when he was three years old and he grew up to be like this murdering weirdo. <laughs> and I did that over a dubstep track. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah. So yeah, that's how we got into <laughs> rapping over dubstep. Yeah. We are the pioneers and fathers of that shit. And currently the biggest in the scene. But yeah, that's another subject. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, you know, read the fucking questions out, man. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, so this was to... Um, wait a minute, who was that last question from? Because we need to big him up. I knew he was going to fuck this shit up. No, I'm not going to fuck list, it up, man. The way the list is. All right, at Leon, that was Leon Raxo. Oh, big so, up. Leon underscore Raxo, big up, bro. On yeah, man. Yeah. Um, that was from him, that one. Right, so moving back on to Twitter. Um, I'll type uh, at WizDMB, yeah? This is a good question, this. Because we've been talking about this today. Okay. Do you think data can help artists improve their engagement? Massively. One, this is literally what we've been talking yeah. about today. The thing is, right, social media is changing, like, constantly. In it, guys constantly changing and we try to keep up we invest in keeping up like we put time effort money resource into trying to keep up with with how things are changing but ultimately it's changing all the time so can data help an artist engagement to use an artist one billion percent it is absolutely the only way forward a lot of big artists that you see now built these channels and platforms three, four, five, six years ago, seven, eight, some cases. And back then, the algorithm was much more open where, you know, these platforms were trying to build, they were trying to grow, they weren't so heavy on monetization. So they would show your content, they would show your music to bare people, they'd show it to everyone and they would allow you, you, your pages mm. to, to build. Now, no, they ain't showing it. Because of censorship, that everyone's trying well, to, every platform's trying to monetize and it's if not something just slips through the net <clears throat> that's fucking got content that's deemed to be offensive then platforms lose monetization <clears throat> i think that that's, no, that's just one that's aspect part of it, of it. Yeah, listen also, i don't know enough about this fuck say the word algorithm my brain goes check your back <laughs> i'm out of the building i don't know but it's also, enough about that shit but it's also down to, to he does they want to focus on ads so they want you to spend money but it's how do you then spend that money? You need to spend that money to get data. Data obviously increases your engagement. So yes, first thing I'd do is look at doing a Facebook ads course, an Instagram ads course. Um, I learn how to basically use the data to, let's say you've got 100 email addresses, right? Facebook knows, if that you put them email addresses into Facebook, Facebook knows what, it, you know, everyone's got a Facebook account, bar a few weirdos. <laughs> they can attach it to them. So you know on Facebook what, what fucking adverts you stopped and looked at for more than five seconds, yeah. what pages you click on, what you've had for your breakfast. So they'll be able to retarget to audiences similar to people who like similar stuff. It's very deep, clever and scary shit, which I don't know a lot about. It's complicated, but what I would say to you, my advice would be, because for me to but try to explain that to you on this is a pointless exercise, but 100% yes, data is, 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 is vital um, to go do a social media course, learn how to get that data, and then learn how to use it to market your music. That is the best thing you could possibly do, especially now. All right, next one. So yeah, that was Wiz DMB, yeah? Big up, mate. Um, um, here's a good one. So this is from, how do you even say that? At HV, at HVTHYV. How do you pronounce that, Cass? All right, at letters, H-V-T-H-Y-V-E on Twitter. Are you going to release another album like Symptomatic? Yes. You know what, we'd love to, something we spoke about in the past. Recently we've been speaking about it. Two months or something. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> something we both expressed a real strong desire to do. Um, you know what, when we made that, like, I was just a very wet behind the ears, producer stroke engineer, mm -hmm. learning. 
Um, it's been a long time since that project and my skills have definitely changed quite a lot and we're, we're, we'd be excited to see what it would sound like now. Even though we love the album, like we listened to it. You know what I mentioned? I listened to it not that long ago and I don't really listen to stuff all the time, but it was nice to revisit it. And you know what it is though, to be quite frank, it's finding the time. So we've got commitments at the minute. We've got some exciting projects what we're working on, trust yeah. me, for some really cool labels. Obviously, you know the drill, you know who the family is. Um, but we've got a few little, We've got, three, we've got our fingers in a couple of a couple of projects. We've got three big projects that we're working on now. So we'll, you know, what I mentioned this to Alex though. Actually, Jay, I said to him, "Big shout to the fat cat Alex. It's, yeah. it's our manager. Big so, shout." So I actually said it to our manager on the phone day before yesterday, two two days ago, and I said, "Ah, oh, me and Jay really want to make another album like Symptomatic at the end, like at the end of this run." And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's something we should work to build towards." So I think. We need to be working on three big projects now. Realistically, we need to smash these three out yeah, of the park, like, which are f f way, well underway now. Yeah, they're coming um, together, and we're, we're not. We've not said much about it on socials yet, and we will do when the time's right. But I think the three very different projects, very different, and I think it'll be our best work to date. And then after yeah. that, we'll look at an album. After that, we're going to try and pin ourselves down and do something a bit more musical and. A bit more a bit like, more like, maybe a bit less dance floor orientated. Yeah. Maybe just more, more story. It's a bit more symptomatic vibe. Yeah, you know man, sy symptomatic vibes, man. Um, and then I'm going to relate that to another question that's very si similar. So this is from Dennis uh, Evlogiev on Facebook. Yes, Dennis, big up. Do we plan on making an album for Disciple? Now, an album for Disciple would be very different to a symptomatic one. Yeah, of course it would. But I think. I think our manager would lo absolutely love us to do that. Um, I think we'd love it as well. We'd really enjoy it, obviously. Um, doing that would just take... Um, time. Yeah, take time. And obviously we've got... A, um, these other projects to do. <laughs> we've got these other projects. So yeah, but it's something that we'd uh, we'd love to do. And, yeah, and man. you know, maybe when we get get back over to LA, which hopefully won't be too long yeah. away, we'll be able to sit down. And, because I think to create an album for Disciple, um, often a lot, a, a lot of the tunes we make, it's done on email and it's done um, I think we'd through craft, technology. We'd but I think craft it. it'd be sick to be in the studio, yeah. to craft it, to actually make something really special. Yeah. And, um, you know, watch out lads, yeah. Disciple lot will, yeah. be, will be hitting you up yeah. when the time's right, you get yeah. me? <laughs> right, um, where are we at? Should we do two more? How long, how long are we on? 25. God, keep, God, keep getting Just through, get, get through, through as many as you can. Come okay. on. Don't how leave did, no okay, now. this is for at, uh, at Cremeset. On Twitter, just have quick answers for it. Yeah, we'll just, <laughs> how, <laughs> how did virus become a thing? Where did the idea come from, and how did you choose the name? Right, so none of us are. I think I'm the only sort of original member, but I joined Virus Crew. Virus Crew already existed that I joined at Field and Park Youth Centre in Used South Used to be Manchester. a lot more members in in Virus. There was ten of us at one point. You know, big salute to the rest of the Dons legends out here do you know what i'm saying like yeah, man. there's a whole history there which is obviously it's it's evolved into what it is today you know what we might even have to might even just get into it because you know what? i've got another one uh, about how did we come up the vomiting trademark and it's all kind of linked yeah totally linked fuck 100%. it should we just tell them and it's well, done then, no, it? the history's there it's not even like there's something to t history is there yeah, for so all to see yeah we, so you know no one's trying to no no exactly so basically Virus Syndicate started out in a youth centre in, in Field and Park, uh, a place in South Manchester in, in England. Um, and originally it was two guys called Shado and Dre, they started it. Um, and me and my friend Rio <coughs> went We said it was going to give quick answers. Is this going to be the longest one? Nah, yeah, but nah, it's well deserved though. Nah, but I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, it I'll needs get, to happen. I'll it's get cool. through it quick. I'll get through it quick. Nah, it's, good. it's long, man. <coughs> so, I um, think we need, I think it's really good to give I just, the flowers I hope, to I hope, the man they, I hope they see it and hear, hear this as well. So yeah, man. Just to spread some love. They need the them. flowers, man. Trust yeah. me. So Dre and Shado started Virus <coughs> um, back in the early 2000s. No, or two, yeah, early 2000s it was they started it. Um, and then me and Rio joined later on. Rio's good friend Shout of mine. Shout out to Rio. 
Um, so we joined and it was also, it was the four of us. It was me, Shado, Dre and Rio. Um, soon after that, uh, another threat, another guy joined us called Goldfinger, who then became a really, really good friend of ours. Um, and then another guy called Mark, Mark One or MRK One, as some of you guys may know him, or as Salado, which he is current group now. He then joined. Um, then it was, how many is that? Uh, six. So there, was six, <laughs> so there was six of us. Um, and then we had another member, a guy called Clive CB. CB he joined. Um, and then, then we became a seven. Legends, man, trust me. And then, legendary, and then, them, then, them ones was legendary. And then bro. at the end, the last person to join was Jay. Um, so I never wanted Jay to join. I didn't like- Because <laughs> he's fucking better than him. I didn't, really spin like, him. I didn't like Jay, really. <laughs> <clears throat> and, then, and then Shadow and, and Goldfinger had been to see him and talk, spoke to him about joining. And I was like, why are you fucking bringing that guy? We don't fucking need him. Why is he coming here? Tell him to do his fucking warning, 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 sound of the CBD performing thing. Fucking stay over there on your sides, mate. Anyway, he came. Anyway, he came. So the way we, we had this flat in Longsight and um, it was Dre's flat in Longsight, should I say. Um, and uh, Jay, kept, well, that's where we used to do practices. Big up Dre, man, he let us practice in there. He helped us build our craft. Um, so yeah, Jay, Jay comes over and um, we went back to back for what? Fucking... <clears throat> Until you run out of bars. Jay, Jay, Jay don't run out of bars. Jay run out of bars. Jay don't run out of bars. It must have been about fucking two hours or something, yeah, wasn't it? it was a while. It was a while. Feeling and then... Sweaty and disheveled. Yeah, we sweaty, disheveled and broken men at the end of it. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're all right. Eh? Yeah. yeah, you're all right. We became best mates yeah, ever since. Safe. So and yeah. here we are. So then after that, um, to cut this quick and short, um, some of the other members didn't, didn't stay on with us. Me, Jay, Mark and Goldfinger uh, went on to sign with Planet Moo, um, did two albums there, various other long, labels. <clears throat> a long, great career together, yeah. man. Started touring the world together. Um, and then a few years ago, me and Jay decided uh, to sort of take take the brand and go a different direction. Mark wanted to go and do his Salado thing and do the house thing. Goldfinger had just started a new family and he wanted to do something a bit different as well. So um, me and Jay took, uh, took, took Virus on, on on its own. We did Symptomatic and then we signed to Disciple and we're living a fucking great life, traveling the world and making hits. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Jeez. but the vomiting sound, so. Who asked me about the vomiting sound? What's the guy called? Because I need to shout Goldfinger on this one. 100%. The vomiting sound. Who was it now? Where are I? Where's the vomiting sound, Cass? Who said that? What's he called? Okay, at... Oh, what the fuck's with these names on, on Instagram, bro? <laughs> at MyJJ. What led to your vomiting trademark? I'll tell you what led to our vomiting trademark. Goldfinger invented it, okay? He did a track called Hitting With A Sickness um, and that came out on Planet Moo Records and he invented it. So it came from him and it became the sound of Virus Syndicate. This became a thing, didn't it, yeah. really? And it became our sound as Virus Syndicate, but make no mistake, Goldfinger invented it and I use it and Jay uses it to represent Virus Syndicate because it became the spine and soul of what Virus Syndicate is, but Goldfinger invented it. Yeah. Big salute, man. That's the history lesson right there. There you go. You get me? That's it. And it would have been none of this without everything that came before it. None of it. You get me? And that's just a fact. Yeah. So, um, yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Let's keep it moving. Um, to keep doing a few more. Yeah, man. Just, I think we just chip through it, man. Okay. Favorite artist to work with? So at, at Suspect Music on Twitter. Ah, oh, virtual riot, I reckon. Yeah, virtual. He's up there anyway. Virtual Val's riot, up, man. man. Val is a, you know when someone's such a fucking G like that is? Oh, he's just amazing to work with, man. And what he, the kind of, when, you, when you're hearing the different stages of the tracks and you're hearing him do his shit and yeah, the guy's just a genius, isn't it? Everyone knows that anyway. Yeah, man. Um, Big up I'd say, riot. um Dope DOD, we're, we're, that was sick. We're amazing to work with. We're Big massive fans to Dope of them. DOD, man. We need to. <laughs> we need to do another project, lads. Yeah, man. I'm them guys are sick. Out. We need to do another project. 
Love you guys. Yeah, man. and them guys man. are sick and they'll be family always, you yeah, know man. that. But working with them was just so cool and um, really easy, you know. Yeah. We, it, just, it just clicked, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, really, any of the guys from Disciple, we love working with Infect. We love working with Barely Alive. Like, yeah, Barely Alive, man. Sick, ba right? Yeah, man. The, the, we, we love working with them boys. Like, obviously, they're all bloody absolute geniuses, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they're all really just great guys to work with and I think that's what Disciples built over there it's just a roster of incredible talent who are also just family you know what I mean and we, we love the guys a lot you get me the, the squad it's it's gang so yeah all, all of them lot okay um, at Ranu 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 Men should have done this in order <laughs> <laughs> I knew it Listen, I we knew it. This in the I know, how the hell he's keeping right. tabs on that? Nah, I told Cass, yous. Look, it's Cass highlighting them green. I said it was me, but it's actually Cass. I thought yeah. it was me, but then yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I thought it was me, but am I pressing something when I'm touching yeah, it? It's going nothing, green. Man. Right, so, um, at Running Men, first thing an artist new to the scene should know. Um, I'll answer this really fucking quickly. Just don't be a dick, bro. Yeah, don't be a dick. Just don't be a dick. Be a be nice safe. person. Be cool. Make nice tunes and just network and be cool. Yeah. And sort your social media out. Yeah, because it's shit. And use your data to engage with artists. Yeah. And make sure your one page looks sick and make sure it looks and sounds and feels exactly like you wanted to, yeah? All of that. All of that. All right, next. Big up, bro. Next. Um, what do you think of color base artists like Ace or a Skybreak and are we planning to collaborate with them? Um, yeah, very much. Colour bass is very much like old school dubstep. Um, it's really musical. Um, yeah, we love that sort of stuff, man. Some of it's not really for me. Some of it, the harder stuff that's a bit more like musical grime, I love that shit. Um, and yeah, we're working on a track with Ace Aura as we speak. So. Yeah. And Chime. With I, like some, I like some of the more musical stuff. I like I some do. of the old school stuff, it's sick. I do just not like the other stuff we're playing before. It's like, it's the worst thing you've ever heard. Oh! <laughs> that's no, colour bass like as well. Sort of but the harder end of it, I like. Yeah. So many genres, man, within one genre. I know, yeah. It's crazy. Something for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> something for everyone. Uh, okay, uh, what are, what's our favorite club? Other dubstep producers? Oh, this is a weird one. I like weird ones. Give me I the weird one. All right. At Wyatt Official 24, <clears throat> what's our favorite collab? Right, we just told you that. Um, oh, is Barely that? Alive, In Fact, Virtual Riot. Basically Disciple. Basically Disciple. Yeah. All right. of them, because they're all sick. Yeah, and they're cool. Um, well cool. And are dubstep producers willing to work with less known dubstep rappers? Well, Snails is bigger than us, and he did a tune with us. Virtual Riot was bigger than us when we did that tune with him. Yeah, so, but it's not really answering the question. I know what you're saying, we've still got a name though, bro. This guy's saying if you maybe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, obviously, uh, yeah. Um, Disciple fam. Again, I think we're going to go back to the same core principles of this yeah, lesson. I think we are. Today's you know. lesson, I think the number one thing to take away is don't be a dick. <laughs> Followed <laughs> closely by sort out your social media. Yeah, and use your data to re And use your data you. to re-engage You know what, I'm audience. saying it like the biggest dick in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's, no, nah, but we, you explained it before and essentially that's what it is. It's yeah. about, you know, just, just make a little noise, you get me? Make a little noise and I think like, we really enjoy to see other rappers in, in dubstep. Yeah, yeah man, Because it's, it's not something you see a lot of, and I know like half of the people love it, half of the people hate it. You know, not everyone's, yeah. not everything's for everyone. But when we, when we hear, wow, what's my man called? Oh, he's sick. Who? Hey. He's got that big tune with the big hook line, man. One of our tunes? No. Rapper, dubstep rapper. Uh, 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 dubstep rapper, go. Uh, 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 uh. One, I don't know who. I was counting on you to fucking know who it was. Oh, Rico Act. Yes, man, Rico Act. Oh my fucking head, bang my and flick your G. fucking neck, bitch. Yeah, I'm glad you remembered his yeah, name, yo, though, because that would have been a disrespect. Yo, where is Rico Act, We've got to say, man, like... Somebody when, at him, man. When we hear people like Rico Act, 
to us, that gas is us up. Like we we wanted to be more of that. Yeah, so Pavan Pava from Foreign so Beggars is doing his thing. Pav well. is smashing it, and he's got his new the new alter ego, the new yeah. thing with the blue. Yo, yeah. love that yeah, shit. Yeah, he's yeah, killing he's it, killing. and the label Foreign the Currency. Vul- doing the Vulgar Trump Listen, thing as everything well. Pav does is does fucking exceptionally. He always has. You get me? Yeah, man. He but from the video. Listen, the whoever this everything. person is here, if you're a dubstep rapper, I'm saying. Send us a verse, let us hear what you do. Yeah. If you spit fire, I'm putting it out there now, bro. Yeah. If this person right. sends so a wait, 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 wait. Verse, no, no, let me clarify this, because this is going right. So what you're say what you're telling me now, Jay, is that if at Wyatt Official24 on Instagram, you're saying that if he sends us a sick verse. If it's sick, yeah. We'll we'll put it on something. We'll do a track with you. We'll do a track. Are we saying this live and direct? I, I'm fucking down. Are All you right. down? I'm down. At yeah. the end of the day, yeah. I want to encourage more yeah. people to rap on dubstep. All right. We we would like it to be a subculture of its own. Yeah. You get me? Like, because it's we think we think it's sick. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, you what, at Wyatt any official, rappers out there who spit on dubstep, let's hear that yeah. shit, man. Send it us. And but if we like especially it. Especially Wire, my G. At Wyatt Official. Your first stop, bro. Send Remember us the to package it in the right way, <laughs> yeah, to make it look good. Just send no, it. I'm joking. Just, just send, send it. it just send us a verse, yeah. If it's sick, we're gonna wear it with you. Exactly, All right? man. All right, big up. Um, imagine, imagine they got a disciple release off this. Imagine he blew up and got massive. Yeah, that'd be Wyatt, amazing. That'd be amazing. Why don't fuck about? And any rappers out there who rap on dubstep, listen. You've heard Jay say it. I'm saying it too. Send us your music. If it's sick, we're gonna wear it with you and we're gonna help it grow. Okay. That's it. Promise you. All right, next one. Man's making prom. Man said promises. Man said promises. Man promised. Man's man. making promises live and direct <laughs> on, on the thing. Uh, We've only got a few left, so we're nearing the end. What does it take to have you on a song? Make a good beat or send us a good verse. Next. Uh, yeah. That was at Nova Can Music on Instagram. Big shout. Um, and that's not to dismiss your question quick, but. No, nah, nah, it's not. It nah, it bro, it's not a disrespect. We'll just try to get through them quick now. Um, I f- future collab with Disciple Artist and any d and artist. So, and this is from at Zodiac Dubs on Instagram. Big shout fam. Um, so bro, with that, um, definitely obviously that. Disciple, that's just, that's that's a no brainer, 100%. Um, we're working, we're working on it. But on the d and project, just wait. Yeah, we got a few things bubbling. We'll just wait, that was yeah. good. Um, any dream collabs? Probably not dubstep related from what mm, it is. Probably not. I was gonna say the same thing, bro. Yeah, just not not related to dubstep. No, I think we've ticked off yes, quite yeah. a lot. But you know, maybe Skrillex would be would be cool. Yeah, but I'm not that asked. Nah, no, I would. I would be. He's, he's a he's a genius. Yeah, he's, a but he's sick. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Prob- I wouldn't want to do a dubstep record with him now. Probably. I don't know. I probably would make a really sick one. Yeah, what about some jacking house with a sick bass line on it? Oh, that too, yeah. What flips into a trap tune like that fucking Rick Ross. Yeah, no, that's the Suicide Squad. Yeah, no, that, that, give, me a, yeah. give me one yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Skrillex. Purple Lamborghini. That one. Yeah. We'll have one of them, please, bro. Yeah, Skrillex, send us a purple Lamborghini beat, bro. Yeah, man, come on. I, know, right. I bet he's got about a folder of 10 of them. I bet he's got a folder of 10. Yo, Sonny. Can, can everyone at Skrillex and tell him to send us a purple Lamborghini beat, please? Yeah, Thank casual. All right, and then last one. Oh, this is a good one to end it with. Yo, it's like I meant it, I meant to happen. Oh, emotional. Okay. It's been emotional. It's been emotional, that's been emotional. Outside (laughs) of music, what inspires and motivates you on a daily? Who's that from? That is from at that mank bird. Oh, yes. On Instagram. My G. Life in it. Like real life. That's what inspires, uh, you know, other artists around. Like I'm fortunate because I I work in a studio producing and writing with artists all day every day. So I'm just constantly around inspiring people who are doing great things and just inspired by events in your life, good or bad. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm gonna give a really soppy, sad answer, but I'm gonna say my daughter. Yeah, man. No, that's real, that's, man. That's that's my inspiration. Same, man. That's, that's what I'm saying by one. life, Number innit? one. Number Jayden one. Jaden and Jake, yeah, Kyra. Man. You know how it is. Yeah, just man. those those are the things that really matter when all is said and yeah, done, man. innit? That's what we do this for at the end of the day. 100%. You know I mean? So all of this is for even this fucking podcast, everything. 
it's all for that. So yeah, man. Right, you've been watching the rundown. This is episode 004. My name's Nick. I'm Jay. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>